Good morning and welcome to Theme Park Worldwide where today I'm here at Knott's Berry Farm. I first visited this park back in September 2015 and I'm really excited to be back here because there's so much that's changed since I was here. Uh, I've got lots of new experiences for me to try including that beast of a wooden coaster behind me, a Ghost Rider. Uh, it was actually closed last time I was here uh, for a complete retrack. Uh, that's now of course being completed because it was four years ago when I was last here. Uh, so I can't wait to get on there and experience it. I love the entrance to Knott's because I've just parked my car uh, at the other side just there of Ghost Rider. You walk underneath it and uh, you've got like all these shops and restaurants down the side as you walk up towards the entrance of the park. Uh, now the park itself dates back to the 1920s uh, when it was actually a berry stand of course hence the name Knott's Berry Farm uh, but then we didn't really start seeing attractions until like the 1940s. Uh, the great thing with this park uh, is Walter Knott was actually really good friends with Walt Disney. Disney uh, and Disneyland of course not too far away uh, from here at all about a 15 minute drive uh, so some of the inspiration um, for Disneyland did also come from Knott's Berry Farm as well uh, but yeah it's got a fantastic history to it and I'm really looking forward to discovering more of that uh, today in this video last time I was here of course I knew a lot about the coasters here uh, and the lineup but I didn't realize how rich the history was to this park uh, and I'm really going to focus on that a lot in this video along with of course uh, checking out uh, all the different changes since I was last here and some classics uh, that I did last time as well. Uh, looks like the sun's just starting to come out now so hopefully it warms up a little bit. Uh, but yes, welcome to Knott's Berry Farm. The park itself uh, was sold in the late 90s to Cedar Fair. Of course, they own the likes of Kings Island, Cedar Point, and various other parks. Um, so yeah, it is owned by them now. However, it really feels like they're starting to put the park sort of back to its roots and take it that way now with uh, really appreciating the history of the park. And I'm not saying that they've gone away from that uh, over the past few years, but it seems like it's more of their focus now uh, to really sort of focus on the history of this place because people love it and I'm so excited to be back here and discover it. Should be quite a quiet day today. Um, it is a weekday and look at Ghost Rider behind, can't wait. Uh, along with that though, of course, I've uh, got hang time to experience. Um, that's a, a new ride since I was last here. That's a Ghost Flower Infinity Coaster. Uh, so I'm looking forward to giving that a ride. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Anyway, make our way down this way now past the marketplace area. Uh, welcome to the vlog here from uh, Knott's Berry Farm. So excited to be back. So the turnstiles have just opened and I'm now inside the park. Loving those guys up there, it's awesome. Bit of a meet and greet going on underneath. Park hours today, 10 a.m. through until 6 p.m. Hey, and here comes Silver Bullet. Love how the Cobra roll is right over the entrance plaza. So here we go, just gonna wait now for like a rope drop without a rope. <laughs> but yeah, we're just gonna wait here now. And then I'm gonna make my way towards the back of the park first, down towards Hang Time, Accelerator, uh, and some of the attractions down at the back. The reason behind that is because I've been told that Ghost Rider really warms up um, if you let it sort of warm up throughout the morning and go on it a little bit later. So that's my plan uh, to head to the back first and then come back towards Ghost Rider and sort of build up to it a little bit. Um, so yeah, that's the plan. So we're just gonna wait for the uh, rope drop without a rope and then we'll head towards the back of the park. Here we go then, so I've made it down towards the back of the park. There's Accelerator. Nobody coming down this way this morning. I don't know if that's a good sign or not, uh, but we'll make our way around to the left-hand side here. Uh, a lot of work has been done around this area of the park since I was last here. Uh, and of course, they completely regenerated all the area uh, where hang time is. And as soon as we turn this corner, the coaster should just be here on the left-hand side. There we go, look at that. Can't see a lot of action this morning, but I was chatting to a really nice team member just, uh, and he was, you know, chatting all about the coaster and saying, oh, are you going to enjoy it? So it must be like scheduled to be open. Maybe there's just nobody here. All the testing was done uh, already this morning. But yeah, it looks incredible. It's a crazy thing that used to be of a coma boomerang on this site. Uh, and of course, when I was last here, we went on that. So yeah, it's crazy, but it looks absolutely amazing. It's a really impressive coaster, uh, but even more so tonight uh, when it's all lit up. It's got a brilliant lighting package on there that was actually done by KCL Lighting, the same people uh, that did the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shell Razor uh, attraction over at the new Nickelodeon Universe Park. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing the lighting. But here we go, let's uh, go and join the queue for uh, hang time. Hopefully it's open. Just can't see a lot of activity around here, but here we go, let's go and find out.
just had not one but two rides on hang time the Gerstlau Infinity Coaster that opened here in 2018 and I really enjoyed it a very smooth enjoyable ride of course it's just got a lap bar and a seat belt it doesn't have any over the shoulder restraints so especially on the front row when you're at the top there it's 150 foot tall when you're actually hanging there before you go down the drop uh, you really fall forward into the restraint that was fantastic. I mean, they're not pushing them down too much either. Uh, and that's a good thing about Gerstlau coasters. Uh, yeah, you've got a lot of room, you're quite exposed on the ride, no sides on the train on these. Um, so you really like, you feel the height up there. You hold a lot longer at the top than like a B&M dive coaster. What's quite interesting with the park, they're actually branding it uh, as a dive coaster, even though we all know it's a Gerstlau Infinity coaster. And uh, that's B&M's version of the ride, the dive coaster. Uh, however, from a marketing perspective, I guess to like the general public coming here, it does the same sort of thing. Um, but yes, you can start with the vertical lift hill, that brilliant moment at the top uh, where you get a fantastic view and you really fall forward. You're holding there for a long time. Then you make your way through five different inversions. Love the Cobra roll. There's a really nice moment of airtime where you go down before one of the inversions. Uh, and it looks gorgeous off ride. Very, very smooth. Curse like coasters, honestly. Like a few years ago, watch some of the older vlogs. I was not a big fan at all. What they've done with hang time is fantastic. And I can't wait to do it at night later on. All the lighting on there. Uh, I think it's going to look absolutely gorgeous. Can't believe it's walk on as well. I mean, yeah, I'm really pleased with that. I think it's a good day to come here to Knott's Berry Farm. So we're in a two train service, getting them people through. Um, if there is any people in the line, really. So I'll be having some more rides on there later. Whilst I'm here, then I'm going to check out uh, Coast Rider, which is the little family coaster here, not to be confused uh, with Ghost Rider. So I'll have a ride on here, putting some off ride shots. And then it's time for Accelerator that's uh, just opened just opposite me here. So we'll have a ride on there. This area, though, they've revitalized it. It looks so much better than it did before. And hang tight, uh, it was brilliant. Really, really enjoyed it. Ride footage there from Coast Rider, a Mac Rides Wild Mouse that opened in 2013. Quite heavy on the trims, unfortunately, around the ride. Uh, it didn't build up that much speed into the corners or on the drops, uh, but it was still good to get back on there. Anyway, up next, it's time to ride one of my favorites here at Knott's Berry Farm. Again, it's absolutely walk on. There's nobody coming down the line here. It is Accelerator. Look at the size of this beast. Fantastic coaster, really snappy launch. Uh, and yeah, it's an instrument accelerator that opened in 2002. So I'm looking forward to uh, getting back on this. Sun's coming out now, so I'll be able to get some nice off-ride shots of the pink track. Uh, it originally opened um, with like red track. And then over the years, it's just faded. But at least it's faded into quite a nice color scheme i don't mind the pink too much but maybe it'd be nice to see them um, upgrade the colors at some point and paint it up maybe to fit in better with this whole boardwalk area they've created down the back here with hang time uh, but here we go let's go and have a ride then on accelerator looking forward to getting back on this here we go
Trying to get back on Accelerator here at Knott's Berry Farm. Not once, but twice. Firstly on the back row and then the front. Uh, when it opened, it was Intamin's first hydraulic launch coaster. And it launches riders from zero to 82 miles per hour in just 2.3 seconds. And of course it launches out and straight up into that 205 foot tall top hat before making its way through various different curves and into the brake run. An excellent ride. On the back row, it's certainly more intense, but on the front row, it's then views. And the fact as well that it's just got a lap bar, no over the shoulder restraints, makes it an absolutely awesome ride. Anyway, whilst I'm here, you can probably hear the next ride I'm going on. Let's go and have a ride on Jaguar, another little family coaster here at Knott's. Along with that, following that, we'll go on uh, Montezuma's Revenge, just behind it. Uh, looking forward to getting back on that. Schwarzkopf Shuttle Loop, I'm a huge fan of those rides. And just to see it again uh, is amazing, so I can't wait to ride it. just how good Jaguar was it's a really good zero Tivoli coaster a fantastic interaction with some of the other rides in the area like Silver Bullet the B&M Invert along with that Montezuma's Revenge that I'm heading on to now uh, yeah it's just a really good fun ride I really like how you go through the loop of Montezuma's Revenge on it as well uh, anyway here we go I've made it to one of my favorite rides at this park absolutely fell in love with this last time it opened in 1978 Schwarzkopf Shuttle Loop it's time for Montezuma's Revenge had so many rides on this last time uh, really really enjoyed it so it's great to be back here and also on a much cooler day last time I was here it was so so hot in fact we even left the park early because of how hot it was and that is very rare for us here at theme park worldwide so it's great to be back here on a much cooler day where I'm wearing a hoodie and a coat it's crazy uh, a much cooler day and a much quieter day to be able to enjoy the park but uh, here we go let's get on a ride on Montezuma's Revenge It was amazing to get back on Montezuma's Revenge. It really is a spectacular coaster. You know me, I love my classic rides. The fact they've kept it going since 1978. It's just a brilliant all-round coaster. I had three rides on it, I couldn't resist. I uh, did one on the front row, and then a couple towards the back of the train. Brilliant ride, look forward to more uh, rides on it later. I've only actually been in the park one hour, but I've done so much already this morning. It's so quiet, really making the most of it. And up next, it's time to ride Silver Bullet. Uh, this is the park's B&M inverted roller coaster. It's got six inversions, and it opened here in 2004. Uh, last time, I remember saying, it looks so great off-ride. I mean, you're looking at it over the water here. It looks brilliant. We just didn't ride that well. It was one of my weakest B&M inverts. I don't know if that's just because of the heat, and uh, that was affecting us quite a bit. Bit. obviously it's much cooler today so let's see what I think to it but it looks so good from off ride but from what I remember last time we just didn't rate it that highly at all so uh, let's head straight round there let's walk on and go and try out Silver Bullets
some off-ride shots there from Silver Bullet. Really enjoyed it a lot more today than last time I was here. Uh, felt like the heat was really affecting us last time we came uh, and also affecting the coaster because uh, it was running a lot better today than last time I was here. Uh, it's a good ride. It's not one of my favourite B&M inverted coasters out there, but I certainly enjoyed it a lot more today uh, than on my previous visit. Uh, and the six inversions on there, I'd say the zero G roll was probably my favourite. Um, that was really forceful today, actually. I don't remember it being as forceful last time. Uh, the couple of different court screws on there. And of course, that helix at the end of the ride up into the brake run, making a really good fun coaster. Nothing too intense. Um, yeah, you know, it's not one of my favourites out there, uh, but it was good to get on it. And I certainly enjoyed it a lot more today uh, than the last time I was here. Anyway, the time has come. I've given it about an hour and a half to warm up, so probably not as long as I need to, but I can't resist. The gates are open and it's time to ride Ghost Rider. Um, so this was originally a Custom Coasters International uh, wooden roller coaster that opened here in 1998. It closed in 2015 through to 2016, uh, where GCI came in uh, and did a full retrack on it. Uh, they also replaced the former trains with Millennium Flyers that, of course, GCI are known for. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to giving it a ride. Honestly, this ride has been like hyped up a lot to me, so I'm really looking forward to experiencing it. Of course, I'm doing a ride now, but I'll be doing numerous throughout the day and really seeing the difference between this morning and tonight when I ride it at six o'clock. But here we go, the entrance is open. It's time to ride Ghost Rider here at Knott's Berry Farm, a coaster I've heard so much about, and I'm so excited to get on. Here we go. It really was everything I wanted it to be and so much more. That is one of the best wooden roller coasters I've ever been on. Sometimes coasters suffer from being overhyped. And on our America road trip last year, there was quite a few rides that did suffer from that. Not Ghost Rider. I mean, that was absolutely incredible. I loved it. It was exceeded expectations. One of the best wooden roller coasters out there. It really is. Uh, I went straight back round. I've had three rides on it. Did a front row and then a couple of times at the back. And wow, what an amazing layout on that ride. Uh, the thing that really stole the show for me was the amount of lateral forces being pushed into the side of the train especially towards the end of the ride uh, where you head straight under the structure uh, and yeah you whack straight into the side of the train and into the brake run it was absolutely incredible and like, it was a breathtaking ride I can't wait to do it later on when it's warmed up even more uh, at night honestly it was just one of the best cocoa experiences I've had that and that was a daytime ride on it I've got a massive smile on my face I've been on it 
uh, and wow, it certainly exceeded expectations by a long way. Amazing, just going around the layout, you really feel like with your arms in the air, you're gonna whack into the structure. Um, like there's so much of the ride that's grasses under each other and over each other. It's just so well put together. And what better way to carry on with my day here at Knott's Berry Farm than going on to this steam train. Look at this. Uh, now the track started to be laid in 1951. It opened in 1952. And I'm really looking forward to getting on this and giving it a go. I mean, look at that, a genuine steam train here at Knott's Berry Farm. Uh, it's just loading now, so I'm gonna make my way over there and let's uh, go and have a ride in it. I'll take you along. Uh, I'm so looking forward to this. Honestly, I love trains and yeah, this is amazing. Like, what an amazing day I'm having here. Honestly, like, words can't describe it. Uh, that's just stole the show for me. Going on that, uh, on Ghost Rider, and then seeing the steam train. Let's go for it. Come on for the ride. Here we go then. So we've just left the station here on the Calico Railroad. Wow, what an authentic experience this really is. to have a relaxing ride on the steam train here at Knott's Berry Farm. Anyway, I just thought I'd show you a little look at the Timber Mountain log ride. It is closed for refurbishment at the moment. Hey, but the good thing is with Knott's, they do keep it clear on the website when rides are gonna be closed. Uh, but yeah, this opened in 1969, one of the classic rides here at the park, and actually inspired the likes of Splash Mountain down at Disneyland. Uh, something that is open though, is the Calico Mime Ride just next door. Uh, I'm really looking forward to getting back on this. I can take you guys along on this one as well. And this opened in 1960. Uh, look at the facade on this, absolutely incredible. Uh, this is a classic dark ride here at the park. So let's go into the queue line and now take you guys on this one.
Absolutely wonderful. The scale of some of the sets in there really is amazing. It's a huge ride. I love the outdoor section as well, where you come outside, you think that it's the end of the ride, uh, but it's really not, and it makes its way back in, and you see that huge cavern again. Uh, I really like how it stops in one of the scenes as well, so that you appreciate just how beautiful it is. And of course, they brought it up to modern times with some of the lighting in there as well. A beautiful ride uh, that inspired a lot of the classic rides out there that have been built following it. Uh, I mean, you look at Big Thunder Mountain at the Disney parks you can tell they looked at that for inspiration um, same as the likes of gold mine that used to be a blackpool pleasure beach back in the uk uh, that opened just over 10 years after this uh, you can tell that it was inspired from that ride so there's so much history at this park and that's what we're going to continue talking about now and we're going to have a walk around calico which is ghost town here uh, walter knott started to build this in 1940 uh, and it kept getting bigger and expanding but now there's so many buildings there's shops there's actors and it's a really nice authentic experience 
buildings. So let's go around and have a look at some of the buildings. Didn't really get that much time to explore this last time. Uh, so I really wanted to make sure this time coming back to Knott's Berry Farm, we had time to have a little look around Ghost Town. Let's start off by taking a look inside the Calico Saloon. Like how you've got the uh, classic saloon doors here as well. Here we go. Oh, how very authentic. I love it. Got all the stage over there at the back. Oh, wow. All the upstairs there as well, the chandeliers. Oh, it's just so well detailed and very authentic. It's beautiful. There's actually shows in the saloon this afternoon, so if I get time, I'll definitely head back in there uh, to go and check those out. You've got the farm candy store just over there. So many little buildings around, so much to look at. You've got the miners bank just over there as well. Got a museum over here, so let's go for a little walk inside here, shall we? Next to the town hall. Wow. So here we've got some old Knott's Berry Farm catalogues. You see down here at the side as well, some of the different tickets. A, B, C and D tickets just there. Oh, okay, so here we've got some of the surveying equipment used by Walter Knott. Wow, all well, the guest register there, more tickets. Loads of advertisements for Ghost Town. This is huge in here, look at it. You know me, I love my theme parks with history and this certainly is one. And last time I really didn't get to appreciate it as much as I should have done. So it's really nice to have the time to explore all of this on this visit. I'm loving it in here. There's so much to look at and plenty of information as well. Uh, but look at these up here, all different types of barbed wire fences all on display at the top. Crazy, you've got all different weapons here in display cases. Brilliant, and look at this locomotive here as well. Wow. The Empire State Express. All different stones, all down the side. Wow. Yeah, this is amazing. We just didn't get a chance to come in here last time. Like, there's so many different buildings here to see. It's nice to really be able to appreciate it all. Gonna carry on having a little look around. Let's go for a little look inside the old schoolhouse just here, established 1879. This is actually based off one in Kansas that was built in 1879, as we can see from the plaque just on the side. Let's go and have a little look inside here. Welcome to the schoolhouse. Y'all are more than welcome. Come on in, take a look around if you're cold. Come on up a little bit closer and warm your bodies near that pot belly stove. I just ask you do not touch it because if you do, you're going to break yourself. <laughs> And I don't think the blacksmith wants me to do this job today. So yes. Now this, it is, is it not? Yeah. Yeah. Now the schoolhouse here is 141 years old. Mr. Knott purchased this building in 1951 at auction for $253.58. Crazy to think that the old schoolhouse there is 141 years old. Crazy, I'm loving the history of it all. And the fact they've actually got members of staff placed around, telling you the history of the buildings and the park, uh, it really is fascinating. Uh, we're gonna continue walking down now uh, through Calico. You've got all sorts of different restaurants and buildings. You've got a blacksmith just over here. Oh, it really is amazing, I'm loving it. This is an awesome building just over here called the Bottle House. As you can see, it's actually made of bottles. Like, how amazing is that? There's some really unique gifts that you can pick up from here as well. Loads of different items that you wouldn't normally expect to find in a theme park. And that's the beauty of Knott's Berry Farm. They've really kept to its history and I'm loving the fact they're really celebrating that. 
what an amazing area around here. So many different buildings and shops to walk around, restaurants. It's fantastic, it really is. And there's a lot of authentic food around here as well. And I'm gonna continue having a bit of an explore around here. Um, and then yeah, we'll carry on with the day here at Knott's Berry Farm and we'll get some more footage. Next up, it's time to try out one of the newer additions here at Knott's Berry Farm. And that's a retheme of the former Bigfoot Rapids. It's now being rethemed into the Calico River Rapids. It originally opened in 1987. It's an intimate rapids ride. And it looks really fresh all around here at the entrance uh, with this new entrance sign just there. All the queue line looks like it's better themed. Uh, so I'm looking forward to getting on board. With it being a rapids, should be able to take you on board with this one. Uh, so let's go and experience it. Here we go then. So I've got my own boat here on the Calico River Rapids. Oh, there we go. Let's see how well can I get on this one. Whee! Some really uh, nice effects all the way around the ride. Some sound effects, got a snake over there. I can't see a lot because I'm going backwards though. Oh! Ah! Animatronic at the side. Looks a lot better than it did before. Pony Express over there, that's coming up next. Oh no, some TNT over there. Oh, we don't go near that. <laughs> hey. Of course, because I'm in my own boat, don't think I'm going to get too wet because obviously there's not loads of weight in here like when it's a full boat. Six seaters, these ones. Oh, I must have sat there. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Not got anything so far. A little blotch. Oh, a little bit more, a little bit more. I'm waiting for the mega wave. Is this it? Oh, oh. Come on, you know you want to join in. Oh. <laughs> Bear animatronic at the side. It looks great. All the rocks around, theming. Oh, here we go. Ah! They've done a really good job. Looks a lot nicer than it did before. Can't really remember much from the layout around the back here. I think this is like the return towards the station now. It's not the longest of rapids from what I remember, but all the female looks great. Go through the cave now. There we go, straight down. Is this the mega wave? Oh, nice no, not. There you go, Calico River Rapids. Really like that, short ride, two minutes 30. But it's very well themed, looks a lot better than it did before. And of course, it fits the whole theme of the park even better now, really good. impressed with the Calico River Rapids. I think they've done a really good job of it. All the new theming around there, animatronics, uh, different sound effects, they've done a fantastic job. And it's great to see that Cedar Fair are really thinking about the history of this park with all the Wild West theming around there and fitting it all in um, with Ghost Town. Anyway, up next, it opened in 2008, it's Pony Express. And this is the park Zamperla Motor Coaster. You can see some of the track there just behind me. Uh, so I'll put some off-ride shots in and we're gonna have a ride on this. footage there from Pony Express. Nothing special really that one, however it was good to get on there. I wouldn't wait more than sort of 10 minutes uh, for it. I mean that's how long I waited just, um, just running the one train. But yeah, it was good to get back on there. 
Now, when we were here in 2015, this was the new ride, Voyage to the Iron Reef. We've actually got a full POV of it here on the channel if you'd like to experience this ride, because you're not going to be able to experience it anymore. Uh, it's closed already, uh, only after what, just over four years. Uh, crazy, but what they're actually doing uh, is a retheme of the ride uh, to Knott's Berry Tales, which is basically the return of a classic here at the park. So, um, yeah, they're doing a lot of work on that at the moment. It closed just a couple of weeks ago. Um, so, yeah, I look forward to coming back in the future and seeing what it's like. But the ride system itself uh, was manufactured by Triotech, so it's going to be really interesting to see how it all sort of fits in with the area. Are we going to see some more work done um, all around here? Um, but, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with it. Just seems like a very short life for this attraction, to be honest. I quite liked it when we did it. Of course, it was nothing on the likes of your Disney Dark Rides and Universal, um, but, you know, it was quite good for what it was for a lower budget ride. Um, but I look forward to seeing what that's like in the future. And that's going to be opening, of course, for the park's 100th anniversary. That is not long away at all. Uh, anyway, here's a little look then uh, around this nice plaza area. Uh, this gives you a bit of an idea on the size of the park. So Knott's is actually quite small, but what they've done is packed so many rides into here. You've got like all the Wild West area, all off to the right, all of Calico. Um, you've got Silver Bullet, Montezuma's Revenge, all that area is sort of straight ahead. And just off to the left here, of course, um, you've got one of the newer attractions here, Hang Time, uh, Coast Rider, and Accelerator over at the back there. Uh, anyway, there's still a few more rides that I need to do here at Knott's. Of course, some night rides coming up soon in the vlog as well. Um, so yeah, we're going to do a few more rides uh, down here, a couple of re-rides, and then head on to some of the bits that I've not yet done today. Next up, I've come for a ride on the Sky Cabin. We begin our ascent today on an Orange County landmark that has been flying guests over Knott's Ferry Farm since 1976. The Sky Cabin, which you are currently riding, was originally built in Switzerland and transported in several sections through the Panama Canal to Knott's Ferry Farm and has been soaring ever since. We would like to now direct your attention to outside your window as we tell you some of the sights you will see. To the south, you will see hang time which takes riders up a 15-story lift hill and suspends them at the top before descending down a 96-degree drop. To the east, you will see many sites within our ghost town, Fiesta Village, and Camp Snoopy areas. That mountain range, for instance, is our Timber Mountain Log Run. It was the first state log flume ride when it opened in 1969 and remains to this day one of our most popular attractions. Just beyond those tall pine trees is where you'll be able to set up camp with the Peanuts game. Camp Snoopy, which opened in 1983, was the first theme park area that was dedicated to children under 12 years of age. In the distance, you can see an ancient Aztec temple, which is our Jaguar attraction, a family roller coaster that sends passengers on an exciting tour around Fiesta Village, through the loop of Montezuma's Revenge, and around Reflection Lake. Speaking of Montezuma's Revenge, it opened on May 25, 1978, making it Knott's Ferry Farm's longest standing roller coaster. Montezuma's Revenge is an exciting ride that catapults passengers out of the station at 55 miles per hour. After a moment of weightlessness, the train zooms down the tower backwards, goes back through the loop, and passes through the station up a second 112 foot tower.
it's a beautiful afternoon now here at Knott's Berry Farm. The sun has finally come out. Uh, just on the Sky Tower, some brilliant views from up there, and also Supreme Scream as well. The SNS Towers um, did that uh, to get some great views. Uh, you know my thoughts on SNS Towers. I don't think they're that good really in terms of the force on them, uh, but you get some spectacular views. Of course, if you're scared of heights, then yeah, you're going to find it pretty thrilling. Uh, but I'm more an intermin drop tower kind of guy, really. Uh, but yeah, it's really nice now. What a gorgeous afternoon. Going to make my way around here now towards the Snoopy themed area. Have a little walk around there. Uh, and yeah, do some more re-rides as well. Montezumas, of course. Really just waiting now. Oh, it's noisy. Waiting now for them night rides later on. Looking forward to it. So we've got plenty of time to do some re-rides. Yeah, have a little walk around through the family area. After I've had another ride on Montezumas, of course. I can't walk past the entrance and not have a ride on it. So you just saw some off-ride footage of both Montezuma's Revenge and also Soul Spin. It's a new ride since it was last here and it's a Mondale Top Scan. I uh, love a good Top Scan. It wasn't really running on the best cycle, uh, but still it's a flat ride that they've put in uh, and I really appreciate that, you know. Uh, so it was good to have a ride on there. It was absolutely empty as well. Just walking around the uh, Snoopy themed area now, Camp Snoopy. Um, you've got lots of different rides around here, all sorts of different attractions for the kids. You've got like a rocking tugboat over there, uh, like a bus what takes you up and round, loads of family attractions, it's really well themed around here as well. But there's still a major coaster that I've not been on yet today and that's Sarah Sidewinder. That's where I'm heading to now. Um, this ride is a Mack Ride spinning coaster and it's actually opening at Pulton's Park, um, known as Storm Chaser. Um, they've basically got a clone of this ride. However, uh, Mack are using the thicker track style now instead of what we can see here. Um, but yeah, I'll put some off-ride footage in from Sierra Sidewinder. And like I say, this is the exact layout, or pretty much the same layout anyway, of what's gonna be coming to Pulton's Park uh, later this year. Good fun ride Sierra Sidewinder. I think it's going to fit in really well with that layout at Pulton's Park back in the UK. And if you do want to see some construction updates from that, we are working officially with the park. We've filmed the full series and there's another video to come in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that here on Theme Park Worldwide. Uh, it's a good fun coaster, uh, quite intense actually as well, uh, and a really nice layout. Uh, anyway, something a little bit special coming up now. I didn't get a chance to do this last time. They've got a genuine stagecoach ride here at Knott's Berry Farm. Uh, you may have seen it in some of the clips that are filmed throughout today. You've got this track that runs around this side of the park um, and you actually get on board a stagecoach uh, that's pulled by four different horses uh, around this section of the park. So I'm looking forward to giving this a go. It's one of the originals here at the park. So I'm gonna go and join the queue for it now. It looks like it's a bit of a long wait, uh, but I really feel like it's gonna be worth it to get involved with a real piece of the history of Knott's Berry Farm. Here we go then on the stagecoach ride. I've waited about 30 minutes, the longest wait of the day, but I thought this has got to be done. Didn't get a chance for this last time I was here at Knott's Berry Farm. So we've got four horses at the front pulling us on the stagecoach. These horses don't work all day. They've got over 40 horses here at Knott's Berry Farm. So we're sat on the top, same with those guys at the back. And there's people sat underneath us just here as well. Perfect timing with the train coming past here. What an authentic experience on the back of this stagecoach here at Knott's and the train going past. Wow, beautiful. Oh, wow. 
it really is like stepping back in time. This was the first ride here at Knott's Berry Farm. Dates back to the 40s. Hey! <laughs> It was an amazing experience with some incredible views. So let's say a big thank you to the team that look after the horses and keep that attraction going. It's a big part of the history here uh, and it's great that they've managed to keep it going here at the park. Uh, from talking to the staff on there, it seems like it's got an amazing history to it um, and all the care that goes into looking after the animals as well uh, is a huge part of the operation here at Knott's Berry Farm. Anyway, as you can see, the sun's going down and it's nearly time for some night rides. So I'm going to do a few re-rides on Ghost Rider, uh, wait for it to get dark and then of course we'll check out this at night and also hang time they're gonna be my dark rides tonight that I can't wait to experience so I've just done four back-to-back -back rides over on Ghost Rider just as the Sun was setting and it was absolutely gorgeous however I'm really looking forward to seeing this in action of course it's all the lighting on hang time uh, as I mentioned earlier on in the vlog it's got LED lights all throughout the track some shining up at the support structure it looks absolutely stunning uh, and it was installed by KCL but done some great projects recently and this looks absolutely amazing as much as it looks great off-ride I'm gonna go on there and give it a ride and see what it's like and I'll put in some off-ride footage now you might think oh wow the lighting looks awesome now Wait you see when the train goes round it actually chases and just different patterns and also follows the train as well so here's some off-ride footage of hang time at night in action time was absolutely awesome at night a much better ride in the dark all the lighting on there looks absolutely awesome uh, and I'm really glad that I managed to uh, experience it at night not had loads of time for night rides here at Knott's today uh, mainly because I came on a quiet a day when it closes at 6 I could have come when the park was open until 10 but it would have been a lot busier and I went for the choice to go with the shorter day uh, and I'm glad that I did because I still managed to get my night ride on hang time and now the moment has gone enter the queue line that night ride on Ghost Ride. A lot of people have said that this is one of the best night rides going, so I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, and I'm glad that it stayed open throughout the day, really consistent actually. It's not gone down all day, um, as far as I'm aware. So here we go, it's time to ride Ghost Rider at night, um, and then we'll wrap up the vlog and I'll show my highlights from today, and of course, tell you about my night ride on this beast. It's Ghost Rider, here we go.
And that ride on Ghost Rider was absolutely phenomenal. It's got to be one of the best night rides I've ever had on a coaster. It's the fact they've got like all the orange rope lights around the track that really make it. So it's not pitch black on there and you've got to think there's quite a lot of light pollution around in the area as well. So it's not like a pitch black ride. However, it's just got such a nice ambience seeing like all the local area, all the orange lights shining on the track. Uh, it really was spectacular. That coaster is everything I wanted it to be and so much more. GCI did an amazing job with it. Uh, it's just such a smooth, enjoyable experience that I'm so glad that I've managed to experience here at Knott's Berry Farm. What an absolutely awesome day. I've done so many rides. Highlight to me, of course, Ghost Rider is right at the top, my favorite ride at this park. Uh, hang time, I thought that was really good fun. Uh, not quite as intense as I was expecting. However, you don't need to have an intense coaster for it to be enjoyable. Uh, it was a really good fun attraction that was even better at night with the lighting. And then of course, everything about Calico. I love uh, walking around all there, all the different shops. Uh, just feeling the overall experience of it, speaking to some of the different staff around there. It's just such a nice vibe, this park today. Last time we were here, it was a bit busier. Um, the crowds uh, for some of the rides were huge, and of course the heat really affected us. That's not been the case today. It's been absolutely perfect. Last time I was here, we kind of didn't really see much of the history side to the park, whereas this time, really got to appreciate that and take it all in. Uh, that's been incredible, it really has. Uh, everything that I wanted to be open has been open as expected. Of course, missed out on the log ride, uh, but that was advertised to be closed. So I don't mind so much when something's advertised, at least to keep it clear, and that's the good thing about Cedar Fair. Honestly, I've had no faults today. I thought it's been absolutely awesome. Of course, the steam train, the coach ride, uh, they were brilliant. I love on the train how they've got like the actors they come on there and take over the train. Honestly, there's just been so many highlights, I could just list them off for 10 minutes. Like, it's been absolutely incredible. Uh, it's great to get to this park again. It's certainly not gonna be four years, or at least I hope not, before I next get back here to Knott's Berry Farm. It's just such an authentic American experience. And it's been great to come here and, and experience it. What a way to uh, wrap up the vlog with this incredible view behind me. You see what I mean now about the uh, lighting? Look at that, Ghost Rider at night. Uh, and that's the beauty of this, you sort of walk out, they've got this little marketplace shopping area um, all down the side by the park that is awesome. Uh, yeah, what an amazing day, thank you so much for joining me here on Theme Park Worldwide from Knott's Ferry very Farm, my second visit coming to this park and honestly like, I'm struggling to get my words out after that, it was insane and I've had one of the best theme park days I've ever had here today and last time I was at Knott's we just didn't get the full experience I don't feel whereas this time we've got it and it's been absolutely awesome. Thank you so much for watching and from Knott's Berry Farm here in California that means it's time to cue those credits. See you all in the next video.